Hey folks, this is the D-Link HD Wi-Fi Day Night Camera. So D-Link, we've had a look at one of their cameras before in their home set and that was quite some time ago but they've uh, they've refreshed it now and this is the first of two cameras we'll be looking at uh, this is the hd wi-fi day night camera so you can remotely monitor and record your home in hd wherever you are day or night it costs around 90 pounds which some may say that's uh, that's quite a lot of money but whenever it comes to your home security how much is too much so on the side here we have some information about what you do with it and we've got the my d link light app which you can get from google play and then there's night vision motion sound detection and wi-fi signal in indicator all handy things uh, a bit more information on the back so it's got hd 720 video up to 30 frames per second onboard micro sd card slot for local video recording view up to five meters in the dark with inbuilt LEDs and motion detection, triggered recording, send email alerts, one way audio, and supports H264. Okay. All right, so it becomes increasingly important uh, with these uh, cameras that the software solution is solid. Um, and we, we are going to tend, spend quite some time and take a look at the app and make sure that it's working well. We have a My D-Link Lite card here that has a QR code for registering your camera with the application. So I won't be showing that off, otherwise you'll be able to see this whenever I put it in the bathroom. <coughs> I mean, sorry, uh, in the uh, um, uh, garage. And then we have a Euro connector there, a British connector here, some screws for the wall mount. And, and a power adapter, which has a micro USB on the end, which is very nice indeed. So if this doesn't suit, you can go and get yourself a micro USB cable that will. Also, this happens to be a right angle as well. It's worth pointing out because that's a better profile, but then that plugs into the back of the camera so it might not make a difference. Then the top portion of this we have some foam and the camera itself. There we go, it's a little pill box. Okay, so we take off all this plastic rubbish. Okay, that was just one piece that covers the whole front of it because it's a kind of glossy black plastic. And this is a bit like one of those phone holders you get that clamps onto the window. be honest, I thought this actually did stick onto a window, but obviously it doesn't. It sits like that. It allows you to adjust it like so. Right, so on the bottom we have some rubber feet, and there's two holes here, which I'm not entirely sure what they're for. Uh, there's a cut in here for the cable, and on the side we have FC and CE information. There's a button here, possibly, no, nope, there's not. There's a, a, a release that allows you to take this bit off. If you, and then we've got this bit on the top here, which turns quite a lot. And the camera is in the middle with a microphone there. There doesn't appear to be any night vision LEDs on the front. I thought it said that on the back. But yeah, then in here, I'll cover this bit up because it's a QR code. And we have the connector for the power. So it goes through like so. And then this bit clips in here. And then we run that off to the, the mains. Underneath we have a button and a reset switch. In the middle there, there's a power LED. Uh, the button is a WPS button. So it must work as soon as you plug it in and then WPS gets you online. So we have this plugged in and we're going to film the camera and myself behind the camera. All right, so annoyingly, this is a different app to the one that I have for my current D-Link setup. 
that is annoying. But we'll install it. Uh, it's had over a million downloads. It's got a rating of 3.8. And it looks more like the MIPC app than the actual D-Link app that we've used before. Uh, amazing quality. Wide view is awesome. Slow and buggy app, just horrible. And after firmware upgrade, the connection as remote cameras were lost. Quite, I'm guessing that connection to remote cameras were lost. See, there's the one that I've been using in my Daylink home, which I quite liked. Um, you could do a lot from it, and it was updated not too long ago, but uh, it's only got a rating of 2.6, actually. So we'll open this and see what we have to do to get it working. Watching video over mobile connection uses large amounts of data. Okay, I do have a D-Link thing. And that appeared to work. It actually brought in my other two, or two of the three things I have. Skippy, which isn't actually uh, set up, but Chip is currently working. And I wonder if I can then just view it. New firmware is available for your device. Ah, yes, I haven't been able to upgrade that. I can now using this new app, hopefully. So we need to add a new camera. And it's asking us to use the QR code on the configuration card that I tried to show to you earlier, but then that I was going to show to you earlier, but didn't. And I had to run over and hit the WPS button. We hit the WPS button on the back of this. And we are supposed to get a solid green light on the back. We currently have a flashing green light. And now we have a solid green light. And we've got a solid green light on the front. So we can hit ready. Uh, it's asking us to set a password for the camera to secure it. So obviously where things are going good so far. And while that's happening, what I'm thinking about is the way that you can set this up. It is actually quite a handy bracket. These are obviously for the screws you attach. Take this off. Then attach this piece to the wall. Click that in and then you can put this on the wall and turn that and then rotate the camera so you can have it at all kinds of different weird angles that is actually kind of handy I'm just noticing there's a micro SD card slot on the side there I thought it was on the back okay and our application is saying that things have done successfully there's still an exposed password on the screen so you're not going to see it just yet and this camera is working and there's sign too there you can see me hello bit of lag but better than nothing i suppose we'll turn it around this way excuse the reflections and all that kind of caper right okay just cover up some product placement there uh yeah we've got uh fairly decent picture quality We'll have a look at the settings and see what we can do to increase the picture quality and see if we can record some of this onto the device. That's 480p. We can switch it to 720p, which might generate even more lag. Hello there. This is Gareth. Is there any lag? No. There is a bit of lag and a bit of breakup, I suppose, but uh, auto allows us to change from day to night vision. We're going to turn off the sound because it's a bit distracting. Uh, we can take photographs. And we can go to our information. We, there you can see that we have 1280 by 720H264, 10.5 frames per second, which isn't great. And there's no option to go for uh, Ethernet on here either. We have to rely totally on Wi-Fi. Audio stream has been turned off and then some information about the actual scene itself. So to be honest I think this is actually kind of cool. Uh, I like D-Link software. It, it's rarely fallen over on me. It has from time to time but then I think that's to be expected. Up here we have some more options for the actual camera itself. We have the live view which we were just in. We can go to playback, which allows us to have a look at the contents of the SD card. I'll see if I can take one out. 
I did stick that in whilst it was on, but uh, okay. So there's no video clips available at the moment. Well, we can go in, uh, the, showing the card is currently empty. We can choose what to do once the SD card is full, overwrite or stop recording and notify me. Uh, so you can change the SD card if you like. You can format uh, the micro SD card from the app, which is quite handy. And then our settings menu here has a uh, motion detection, sound detection, Wi-Fi setting, time zone, and enable camera LED. It doesn't seem to have any form of cloud storage, which would be really nice. Uh, I I love the fact I love the ability to be able to store stuff remotely to the cloud. So we can turn on our motion detection, so that'll kick into gear and it'll record whenever something is detected, maybe in your garden or whatever, but uh, once we turn it on, we can choose our active area. So it's taking a snapshot of what it's looking at currently, and then you draw a grid across. So if you have a hedge or something that's constantly blowing in the wind or a tree, you can turn that area off ignore it uh, and then have something like that if I just want to record the light turn up the sensitivity that kind of clear uh, stuff uh, recording by motion detection so that'll kick in and record something whenever it detects motion or it can just send out uh, a notification to you so sound detection as well which is very handy if it's under the cover of darkness and perhaps the camera isn't doesn't actually pick it up because they're too far away from the camera if they're being noisy you'll be able to pick them up there sound detection detection level is currently sitting at 70 decibels which is me talking right now it's detecting that i'm talking louder than 70 decibels uh, detection recording with notifications yeah okay so wi-fi setting and time zone and then enable camera we've had a look at those already and then push notifications so it can give off a sound actually whenever it detects something enable push notifications for that one and then older cameras as well and then skippy the power plug which isn't entirely necessary the application itself has a bunch of uh, settings built in uh, you can sign in uh, mute as default uh, announcements news new features how to use frequently asked questions and about so I can now get rid of that actually, um, because this one seems to do everything that, that one did. And I'll link to those. Okay, well we'll go away, review this, see how well it fares, and uh, get back to you in the coming weeks. Check the notes down below uh, for a link to the review once it's published. Let me know if you have any questions. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care now.